Amen. Praise God. We need God's presence, don't we? I'm glad that we can gather in and feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. We know that He's here where two or three of us are gathered together in His name. Amen. We've been believing. Amen. That God's going to move this morning in the service. Amen. So I believe that He is going to do something great for each one of us. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn this morning with me, if you would please, to Psalms chapter number 23, the very familiar psalm. <coughs> and then once you found that, turn to John chapter number 10. John chapter number 10. Psalms 23, and then John chapter number 10. We're going to try to unite both of these and this is a great text to be able to preach from, Psalms 23. And then jump over to John chapter number 10. Psalms 23. And I'm going to look at just verse number 1 for right now. The Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. David here was a shepherd, was a tape. He was a shepherd. He knew what it was like to take care of all those sheep, especially when you read about him in his early years taking care of his father's sheep. We are very familiar with that, him writing psalms and singing to them. We're familiar with him slaying the lion and the bear. Amen. And uh, as, as God used him to bring peace to the sheep, who would have ever thought that somewhere down the line God would be using him to bring peace to his people, the nation of Israel? You never know what God's doing right now in your life. It, it may seem like a humble beginning, but God may be using that for something greater. Don't ever despise those moments of humble beginnings. So here's David. He is speaking as a sheep and not a shepherd. And uh, because God often throughout His Word refers to us as the sheep. Now I don't know about you, but if you do any type of studying about sheep, you would think, oh my. I hate to admit it, but I'm much like a sheep. You'll never find a sheep being the national emblem for a country. Uh, not like the lion, not like the bear, not like the eagle, because sheep are very much different. In fact, you look at sheep, and uh, I, I, I thought, is there a better way that I can say this, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but it really fits. But sheep are stupid. And sheep are stubborn. Wow. You put those two elements together, they really make for a terrible mixture, don't they? Stupid and stubborn. And uh, really, that's what sheep are. And uh, I hate to tell you this, but that's really what we are a lot of times. We don't make the wisest choices. Sometimes we're pretty foolish in our decisions. And sometimes we're really stubborn on top of it. And uh, you'll find that sheep, uh, besides being... They're stubborn and uh, stupid. You'll find that. Has anyone ever went to the circus before and seen sheep marching around a circle or walking on their back legs? Any ever see that? No, you probably will never see them at a circus because they usually just, they, they don't get there. They don't make it. And how many of you ever noticed that sheep look a lot different than a lot of other wildlife out in the field? You ever have to kind of uh, squint and you see that deer standing there or you see that sheep or you see that uh, bunny standing there? Uh, you ever have to squint to see sheep out in the field? They're not very camouflaged, are they? They're just not very smart. They're not very uh, uh, wise animals. Uh, and, and really, they're very awkward. In fact, it's been so sheep that they'll just walk to the edge of a cliff fall to their, 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 their demise. They're just not very smart animals. In fact, Isaiah said it this way, uh, uh, with like uh, we, all of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Uh, there certainly is a point in that, that sometimes we can be awkward, sometimes we can make foolish decisions, and sometimes we can just be downright stubborn. And so because of that, there's a very important thing that we need to learn. And that's the voice of the shepherd. In John chapter number 10, Jesus speaks and he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, 
but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. And he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep followeth him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Ah, oh, Lord, help us this morning that we will know the voice of God. Amen. If there's anything that we need to know sometimes in our doubt of being foolish and stupid, and that of being stubborn, and that of being awkward. God, help us this morning that we will know the voice of God. Amen. And that's my challenge to you this morning, is that I would encourage you to know the voice of God. Uh, this, this week, uh, as I said earlier, with Robin Williams, oh, what would it have been like? I think the outcome would have been different. Brother Josh, had Robin Williams known the voice of God, Amen. What would it have been like if in the moment of devastation, Brother Craig, of life going out of control, he could hear the voice of God? Brother Doug, just being able to tune in of all the other voices that are out there that speak so loudly that we can hear the voice of God. I think I've told the story before, but I want to share it this morning because it fits well. But the story is told of a shepherd who lived in the Scottish Highlands. And he had a little daughter, and his daughter would go out with him as he would call the sheep. And as he would call the sheep, Anthony, she would love out over the valleys and over the moors as she would make that crazy sound. She loved the echo of her daddy's voice when he, she would hear him calling the sheep. It was beautiful as it carried out across the valleys and the moors. As the years passed, that little girl grew up and she became a beautiful lady. And she decided that she was going to leave home and that uh, she was going to go to off to one of the great cities of Scotland, Glasgow and Edinburgh. She wanted to go there. Rachel was just to call a young girl's heart. But she's feeling when she got there, all of a sudden she got mixed in with the wrong folks. She would write home, Sister Dietrich, but her letters begin, begin to be more and more spread apart until Sister Tina, Mom and Dad never received a letter from her. News came to her father that she had seen one of the boys that she had grown up with there in town. And, and, and there that young lady did not even acknowledge him. And it broke her father's heart. And, and he had heard how she got mixed up with, with some very vile and negative influence uh, uh, in her life. And so there she was living in the city. Her dad decided that he was going to go and he was going to find her. He walked the streets of Edinburgh. He walked the streets of Glasgow looking for his daughter. He could not find her anywhere. He looked through all the poor neighborhoods. He looked through all the rough corners of town. And, and, and he could not find her. His heart was broken. He began to walk away. And outside the city, by the time he decided he was going to do something as crazy as it may sound, he began to call the sheep. There in that hollow holler that he would, he would give. And that, that crazy noise, Brother Eli, people began to look at him and shake their heads. They didn't know what he was doing in the middle of town. On every street, he would begin to call for sheep as his voice would begin to echo down the streets. All of a sudden, his daughter heard the voice. She left the place and the company where she was. And she went running to her father. He could not see her. He could not find her. But do you know what? She knew the voice of the shepherd. She knew the voice of her father. And all of a sudden, she went running to her father's home. He took her back to the farm where he was there. Amen. He began to bring her back to decency and modesty. Amen. If there's something that this generation needs to know, it is the voice of the shepherd. Amen. If there's something that the church needs to know, it is the voice of the shepherd. If it's something that we need to know, amen, it is the voice of what doctrine is. It is the voice of love. It is the voice of God. Amen. God help us. Amen. That we will know the voice of the shepherd. There is one voice that we need to know. And that's the voice of God. Amen. I wonder how many of us know the voice of God.
voice of God. Amen. As He tugs on our heart, as He speaks in our ears. Amen. In John chapter number 6, the Bible says, uh, for, for that many uh, uh, of His disciples went back and walked no more with them. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye go away? Then Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. He has the words of life this morning. Amen. He is the one who is able to speak to the deepest needs of our heart. Oh, to hear the voice of the shepherd. Oh, to hear the voice of God. I wonder this morning what it would be like if we could all tune into the voice of God. I need to tell you the church is a sheepfold this morning. Amen. The shepherd is Jesus Christ. Amen. The porter is that of the pastor. Amen. But this morning, the safest place in all the world is the church. The safest place in all the world is the church. I know this is your church, but I'm talking about the church. That's the safest place where we hear the shepherd's voice, where we hear the voice of God. It's the safest place in all the world. Amen. The Bible says this, that in the last days, the perilous times are going to come. In the book of 1 Timothy 4, verse 1 through 3, the Bible says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time shall the Son shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. I wonder what the world would look like if more people would hear the voice mm -hmm. of the show. I want to say something this morning. I want to say this as kindly as I can. Last night I had to run. We got home yesterday. I needed to get a few things. I, I got it down at the Boyers. That was late in the evening. When I was turning on the street, I thought I saw something that was repulsive. I saw there two young women with children holding hands and running all over each other in their arms. Let me tell you, that was repulsive. But as I thought a little deeper, how disheartening that must be to God. See, we live in an age where the Bible says forbidden to marry. We are living in an age where we're looking at same-sex marriage. I need to tell you, God still honors marriage. I need to tell you that God still honors that. Amen. I need to tell you that God still loves people, but God dislikes sin. God hates sin. Amen. I think that we need to have some folks that will hear the voice of the shepherd in their lives about how to live. That will hear the voice of the shepherd about how much he loves them and desires to work for them. Amen. The voice of the shepherd is a voice that has been drowned out the hour in which we live. The Bible says that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of them own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections, truce breakers, false accusers, uh, incontent, fierce, uh, fierce despisers of them that are good, traitors, heady, uh, being high-minded lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. If we'd ever lived in an age where folks love pleasure, it's the hour in which we live. But yeah. listen to church just isn't fun. God's not looking for you to have fun. God's looking not for your happiness, but God's looking for your holiness. Amen. And in the middle of holiness, you will find happiness. We live in an hour there's such a spirit of form of God.
our message. But if we blend it, we miss hearing the voice of the shepherd. We miss hearing the voice of the master. It's so important that the church hears the voice of the shepherd this morning. Do you know why it's important that we hear his voice? Oh, I love Psalms 23. Because the Word of God says he leads us into green pastures. I don't want to live by green pastures. But I need to hear his voice before I can ever get there. He leads us beside still waters. Oh, I need the still waters. That's a place where I can go and I can find refreshing and drink, not raging waters. I need to be there, but brother David, I'll never find it if I can never hear the voice of the shepherd. Oh, God, help us this morning that we will hear the voice of the shepherd. I realized that the shepherd had several tools. He had a staff with him. He, he had a, uh, that rod with him. He had a canteen with him. He had a bag with him. Yes, that, that staff, amen, it was for correction and for guidance. And the canteen was to pour water out. And so the sheep could be refreshed in that bag. He had all types of ointments and medicines. They were important. But I believe that the greatest tool about all
say you can listen to my voice. You need to make things right with me. But Brother Craig, just as a young person, I made things right with God. And there's one thing Sister Stacy had tried to do, and that is to tune in to the voice of God. He calls us to areas of first service. He calls us to areas of higher living. And you know, one day, He's going to eventually call us on into eternity. But we have to know the voice of the shepherd. There's a few specific calls that I think that He does. Is he calls us through brokenness. Sin breaks this morning. Sin destroys. Sin is destructive. When sin is finished, you will have nothing left. But somewhere out of the rubble, God calls us from brokenness and puts us back together. I'm talking about the voice of the shepherd that calls to the broken. Amen. But he commendeth his love toward us in the world. We were yet sinners. Amen. The Bible says Christ died for us. Much more than being justified by His blood, shall we be saved through Him. I'm thankful for the voice of God that calls us from brokenness. Amen. A broken life battered with sin. Amen. God calls us. Philip Keller, he wrote several books. And one of his books he wrote, he wrote uh, uh, about this, this, this shepherd. But he wrote about the sheep dog. Amen. Lessons from a sheep dog. And he talked about how that he read an ad about a sheep dog that was about two years old. And the owner said that this dog was not good with children. This dog would not listen. And somewhere Philip Keller said, I want to go and get that dog. As he made phone calls, as he went to get that dog, he found that that dog was all pinned up. He thought, my, my, I know why this dog is so bad because the owner never showed him love. He got close to the dog and the dog began to show its fangs and begin to growl. He said there were generations of ticks upon that dog. Amen. There were fleas everywhere on the dog. He said finally he was able to coax that dog and get it into his car. He said he drove miles to the countryside where he was a shepherd. He said he let the dog out. He said it took coaxing to get the dog out. He said I tried to feed her and feed her. He said but she wouldn't eat. He said I couldn't do anything to help this dog. He said, I tried to talk to her in a gentle voice. He said, one day, he said, the best thing I can do for this dog is let her go. He said, let her go, and she took off. So it was days, weeks, possibly months, before he seen the dog again. He said, he thought she was dead. He said, but as he was taking care of the sheep, he could see her in the background. And day after day, when Josh the dog would make his way really closer, and closer. He began to talk to the dog. As he talked to the dog, the dog began to make its way closer day after day after day. Until finally, there was a complete breakthrough. And Philip Keller said that was the kindest dog that he ever owned. You know what made the difference? The voice. You know what will make a difference in a broken life? The voice of the shepherd. That's the man of Galilee. The voice of the shepherd made a difference. Ask the woman at the well. The voice of the shepherd made a difference. Ask Simon Peter. Ask Mary Magdalene. It's the voice of the shepherd that makes the difference. I never will forget Brother Dismore. There was a man who came to his church. He has since died. But Brother Ronnie came to his church. He was bound by drugs, alcohol, long hair. He was a hippie. He came and heard the word of God. Do you know what? Week after week, Brother Dismore said, I didn't know what was going to become of this man. Uh, he was really a misfit in talent. Amen. But you know what made the difference? The voice of the shepherd. Amen. Brother Ronnie was one of the guys. He had been here several times. Amen. On the front pew. He, he would he would pray encourage him while he preached. Amen. Cleaned himself up. Changed his life around. You know what made the difference? The voice of the shepherd. You know what makes a difference in Brother Seville? Amen. The voice of the shepherd. You know what will make a difference in you? The voice of the shepherd. Oh, how we need to hear his voice. Not just one time, but being tuned to 
that voice. Maybe there's been someone in your life and you thought, man, I never forget their voice. Maybe they've died and time has passed and now you can hardly remember to distinguish that voice because if we don't hear that voice frequently, we forget it. Amen. We need to hear the voice of the shepherd. Yeah. It's a call to the broken. Amen. To be made whole. Amen. The voice of the shepherd. Great ministries have come out of brokenness. Great lives have come out of brokenness. Great families have come out of brokenness. Great churches have come out of brokenness. Some of the greatest sermons have come out of brokenness. Some of the greatest songs have ever been penned and had melody put to them have come out of brokenness. Amen. Great prayers, amen, that have been prayed come out of brokenness. Amen. The voice of the shepherd calls to the broken. And then he calls for a higher life. You might say, you don't have to live in that place of brokenness anymore. I'll call you high. Amen. Remember the rich young ruler, what must I do to inherit eternal? The voice of the shepherd says, you need to sell. But he couldn't move to a higher position because he wouldn't listen to the voice of the shepherd. Peter and Andrew, their call was leave your nets. God brought them to a higher position. Think about Matthew. You must leave all the tax tables. God brought him to a higher position. You think God saw Paul? Amen. What did God want to do with his life? He wanted to bring him to a higher position. And God did. Matthew 23, 37 says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and all thy mind, and all thy soul. And then God wants to bring us to a higher place. I wonder if you would listen to the voice of the Master. You want a quest for excellence? The voice of the Master brings us to the higher place. He brings us out of brokenness. Amen. Are you desiring spiritual rise? The voice of the Master calls us to a higher place. Are you looking for your eyes to be lifted up this morning? Amen. Fix them upon Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. The voice of the Master calls us to a higher place. Amen. I want to tell you something. There's something about the voice of the Master. Amen. That is the greatest thing in our memory. You know, the devil would like to bring up things from our past. But Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind, I press toward the mark. Amen. It's a voice that's greater than any memory that we may have. Amen. There's something that's amazing. I've shared this before. But I was reminded of this again this week. Uh, I was with my wife's uh, grandpa, and uh, grandpa is battling dementia, just very badly. In fact, he don't even know his own children's names anymore. Uh, he knows his wife's name. In fact, he doesn't want her to even leave the room that he's in because she brings such consolation to him. He'll smile, and he can play a good game. And, and uh, 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 his daughter said, uh, said to him, Grandpa, or, what's, what's my name? And he said, you're my daughter. You know your name. And he couldn't remember it. And, and uh, he went to the doctor. The doctor was testing him. And uh, he, she said to him, she said, what city are you in? He said, you know, I'm in the same city you're in. <laughs> Grandpa just can't remember. He, he knows how to play a good game. But there's one thing Grandpa doesn't remember. He began to talk to him about the Lord. Grandpa, you pray for us here like I did. I pray. God told me you were going to obey me. He remembers the things of God. You know what? Because the voice of the master is greater than any man. Telling you this morning, we need to be inclined to the voice of the shepherd. He calls for brokenness, he calls to a higher place. He calls from a place that's greater than any other memory that we may have the voice of the shepherd. The sheep, they know my voice. And I wonder how long has it been since you've heard the voice of the shepherd. 
Listen, whether it's audible this morning, some folks hear an audible voice of God. Some folks hear the voice of God through a sermon, through a song, and some hear it through prayer, all hear it through prayer. Amen. How long has it been since you heard the voice of the Master? Amen. There's a lot of voices crying out in the world. Amen. The voice.